Good afternoon, this is Dr. Richard Stone, Clinical Director of the Adult Leukemia Program at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Today I'd like to talk about some novel, new, less potentially toxic therapies for older adults with AML. The problem of treatment of older adults with AML is a very vexing one for a number of reasons. First of all, the efficacy of standard therapy is low due to inherent disease resistance on the basis of a number of biological factors, not the least of which might be the expression of genes whose proteins encode for uh, whose genes who encode for proteins which pump chemotherapy out of the cells. A second reason why older adults with AML fare more poorly is uh, intrinsic host biology with impaired end organ function due to the aging process, as well as decreased stem cell clearance, making chemotherapy more toxic. Therefore, the older adult with AML who receives chemotherapy can expect no greater than a 50% chance to achieve remission and no more likelihood of 20% of those who achieve remission being long-term survivors, so the cure rate's very low, and the immediate survival is 10% or less. What can we do about this? Well, obviously, it would be nice to have new drugs that dealt with some of the resistance mechanisms and that were less toxic. I'm not sure we have too many new drugs that deal with the resistance mechanisms, but there are a few single agents out there which are now being touted as potential replacements for 3 plus 7 in the vast majority of older adults with acute myeloid leukemia. Today, I'll be speaking about three drugs that were discussed at the American Society of Hematology meeting recently held in San Francisco in December of 2008. Now, not all older adults, defined as those who are greater than age 60, uh, were candidates to receive these single-agent, presumptively less toxic therapies. They had to have been shown to be even higher risk than the average older adult with AML by virtue of having one of the risk factors that suggest that the patient would not do well with 3 and 7. These risk factors have come down to us from a series of explorations of databases and include age greater than 70, antecedent hematological abnormality, intermediate or adverse chromosomes, and performance odds of 2. One of the agents that's being studied most closely is clofarabine, a nucleoside analog that's approved for use in pediatric AML. At this ASH meeting, we heard from Dr. Erba from the University of Michigan about an update of the Phase two trial in which patients with one or more of the risk factors I mentioned were given clofarabine a dose of 30 milligrams per meter squared per day for five days. The complete remission rate was above 40%, with most of the patients having full, complete remissions. The median number of cycles administered was two. The duration of the remission was not that long, and we don't know about quality of life, although the toxic death rate in the first 30 days was under 10%. What was interesting about this data is that patients who had three risk factors or two risk factors did just as well as those patients with only one risk factor, implying that the, that the drug has some de uh, is, is an active agent even in those with poor prognostic factors. Two other agents, which uh, time does not may permit me to go into in detail, include cloridazine, a novel alkaline agent, which has been used mainly in people who don't have an antecedent hemologic abnormality, which is just given once every three weeks and another drug called decitabine, a D9 hypomethylating agent approved in MDS, now being used at a dose of 20 milligrams per squared per day for five days every 28 days in people with uh, such high-risk AML. Dr. Cashin uh, presented an abstract in which patients with old, uh, older adults with AML with one or more of their formation risk factors were given decitabine at that dose, and their emission rate was slightly lower than we saw with clofarabine, but still appreciable, and the toxic death rate was, a, was under 10% uh, also. Uh, so the big issue now is whether any of these agents will be approved as a substitute for 3 plus 7 or other chemotherapies in older adults with AML who have one or more of the aforementioned risk factors. We'll have to stay tuned to this interesting field to see whether this is true. Uh, at least if we can get people into remission with the same likelihood as with 3 and 7 in a less uh, toxic uh, fashion, as long as the duration of remission is reasonable, it might be an advance. Thank you very much for listening.